Let's keep it short this week and talk about Array.ForEach. This is a handy method that allows you to iterate over an array and do things with the value found at each array position. Now, we can also do this with a good old for loop, but for each can be a bit cleaner and nicer to use, especially when working with large datasets. It also has some built-in benefits. Let's start by establishing an array. First off, let's iterate over the array with a for loop. This will log our five incredibles. No surprises there. Let's take a look at the for each version of the same code. Save this, refresh. Same exact output twice. Maybe it's because I've spent a lot of time using arrow functions, but I find that code to be more concise and more readable. I like not having to think about what index I'm on, and I like not having to refer back to the initial array like incredibles i. It's important to note that array.foreach is not a one-to-one -one analog for a for loop, though. It differs in one important aspect, which is how it handles arrays that have an empty value somewhere in them. Specifically, it ignores those values. The for loop does not. Here's an example of one such array. And here's our for loop. Save that. Run it. As you can see, we're getting an undefined at the third position. That's fine, and may actually even be valuable to you depending on what you're trying to do. But in many situations, we'd rather just skip right over that blank value and keep on going. Array.foreach lets us do that. Here's the example. Let's add a line for clarity here. Once we save this and refresh, we can see that here we're getting undefined with the for loop, and here we are not. Just a complete blank. It still keeps track of the index, though, should you want or need to use it. Just pass a second parameter to your anonymous function, like this. And refresh. Note that position 3 is skipped entirely, and the indices continue to line up as expected. One other thing you may have heard about array.foreach is don't use it. The reason for this is because it is in some cases slower than using a for loop. Personally, I think this is wildly overblown unless you're writing code that's going to execute at an enterprise level. Array.foreach can easily execute more than 60,000 times a second, and is even faster in most modern browsers. For the vast, vast majority of use cases, that's plenty fast enough. Your DOM paint times and other factors will be much more of a concern when it comes to speeding up your site than what type of array loop you want to use. So if you're operating at a Facebook or Twitter scale, then by all means, consider optimizing your for each's down into for loops where plausible. For small projects, I say go with whichever style works best for you. See you next week.